In May, we sounded the alarm on household debt and personal savings. How do things look on debt and savings a few months later? On the debt front, in Q2 at Citigroup, U.S. credit card spending volume was up 15 percent from Q1, while at J.P. Morgan Chase, it increased 14.7 percent quarter over quarter. At Wells Fargo, the metric was up 15.8 percent between Q1 and Q2. And at Bank of America, credit card spending was up 17 percent. Across all lenders, credit card spending volume popped 20 percent in Q2, bringing household credit card debt to a record $1.1 trillion and change in May. Amid this record debt, 40 percent of people report taking on more debt to help make ends meet. At Bank of America, home equity loan originations increased 25 percent between Q1 and Q2. The pace of credit card spending has slowed. However, it's still robust and growing at a fast clip. While consumers are keeping up with their credit card bills, we think it might just be a matter of time before they run into trouble. Here's why. Inflation accounts for most of the spending increases we're seeing among consumers. We're seeing more spending on necessities and less in discretionary categories like electronics and general merchandise, as evidenced by recent 2002 earnings warnings from Best Buy and Walmart. To top it off, personal income isn't growing as quickly as these increased expenditures on the basics. Moving on to savings, personal savings decreased 6.5 percent between May and June, bringing the nation's personal savings rate to 5.1 percent. While that's up from May's 5.5 percent reading, it's off 41.2 percent from the end of last year. And in June, 58 percent of people reported concern over how much money they have saved, up from 44 percent at the same time in 2000. It's important to take personal income into account here. It only grew by 0.6 percent between May and June. On the spending side, between May and June, U.S. households spent 1.6 percent more on goods, 0.8 percent more on services, and 1.7 percent more on personal interest payments, such as mortgage interest. It doesn't take a mathematician with a minor in rocket science to conclude that things are tight in more than a few households. The bottom line is this. Here's the million or billion or trillion dollar question. Will the affluent continue to prop up an economy on the brink of a full-blown recession? While nobody knows what the ultimate answer will be, we continue to follow the numbers. With each blurb of data, the picture becomes more clear. The affluent remains strong, taking trips and spending money on things they don't need. Meantime, lower income earners have focused their spending on necessities out of necessity and might be increasingly turning to credit cards to do so. If the bottom falls out on the relatively poor, all hell doesn't necessarily have to break loose. Wealthy consumers can, to some extent, carry the economy on their backs as they appear to be doing in the housing market. If this potentially best-case scenario plays out, it could be good for companies such as Visa and MasterCard, meaning they might deserve a place in your long-term portfolio.